Hey there YouTube, my name is Ray Shepard, this is Taurus High Point Productions. Uh, I'm going to throw something out there with the possibilities behind it. Um, I've been kind of homecasting, making my own homecast bullets. I started with round ball, and now I'm moving on to... Uh, Modern casting, uh, your 3.56, your .451 for the 45 ACP, your .401 for your 40 Smith and Wesson. And of course, these bullets have uh, lube grooves that need to be lubed, and before you set them, that's part of it. Um, of course, your black powder stuff that that I'm doing it needs lube also, and. I've been trying to find a happy medium between the two, kind of a, a sheet or a blanket coverall type deal. Not a lot of it out there. Thank you, Recoil Therapy. Recoil Therapy, check the channel out. He's I, I ask nothing. I just merely pass information along as I get it. I'm a regurgitator. But Recoil Therapy found a bullet from ingot to target. He linked it in his description. I'm going to try to link it in this one as, as we go along. It's written by Glenn Frizel and Robert Applegate. Um, it predates the, the stuff they pull into this book predates like Elmer Keith and Jeff Cooper and, uh, and it, it pulls a lot of stuff in and it makes a lot of sense. Now the lube that Recoil Therapy throws up and, and mixes up for everybody contains two ounces of canola oil, kind of like a machine oil. Uh, takes the place of like a machine oil. Two ounces of anhydrous lanolin. What that is is a bonding agent. Twenty ounces of beeswax. That's a carrier for the stuff to help get it down the barrel. One pound of Crisco and that's the loop. Is there any right or wrong recipe? Can you substitute this for that? Yes, you can. You can use the toilet rings. You can use the soy wax. But be... Have the knowledge before you do that. That one, they're going to cost you just the same now. Two, that they're full of chemicals that actually add to the uh, fouling. These chemicals will burn and they add to the fouling. Um, both soy wax and the toilet toilet wax, toilet wing wax, Johnny ring, whatever you... From to coin recoil th therapy from your home desperate stores or around here we have the lowest loser store. Um, and then we have our family, uh, not so ace, uh, helpful hardware. And then we got the, the, the hardly got anything in it where store. So be, be, just be advised that when you do that substitution, there are consequences. Toilet wax, soy wax, they smoke a little more because of chemicals in them. Uh, is it a be all and all? No, but can I pan lube, say, 45 ACP bullets that I've just cast, or cast the day before, because I know you can't cast them right after they're too high. You, you, you cast the day before, you, you, you pan lube your 45 ACPs. 
your lube gets cold, you pull your, your, your bullets out and you got this little pan of lube there and hmm, throw it back in the toaster oven at about 140. Let it warm back up, get all liquidy back on you again. Pull it back out. What do I do? Take a piece of felt. Now put it in there. Let it absorb. Pull the felt out. Let it dry. And I punch my uh, 36 round ball. My 44 round ball. My uh, 9 16 for the Lee Reel. I punch those felt wads out. Are some lubes better than others? Yes. Can some lubes do more than others? Like, if you took that recipe and mixed the toilet wax or soy wax, I would not suggest that for a modern firearm. That's me. If you use it for black powder, hey, fine. There's no big issues there with that. But for a modern firearm, I'm just the chemical properties in the soy wax, and the, it may not do anything different to the barrel other than fouling. And let's say you get six or eight shots in, and your barrel is caked, and you don't know it. That's kind of what I'm looking at with all the matted chemicals and that other stuff. You know, for a smooth bore, uh, even uh, a percussion or a uh, inline muzzle loader. Yeah, sure, great. Toilet wing racks, soy racks. Yeah. I rod every three, every three shots, two to three shots anyway. So. Yeah, that would be beneficial there, although it's not going to be any cheaper because the cost is about the same. I'm just throwing this out there for the home caster. You know, he's getting started and he's trying to make up his mind which to do. Maybe this helps make it a little easier with, with, with a little knowledge. You know, powder coating is great if you're doing sticking with all your moderns. But if you're doing a crossover from, uh, like I'm doing, from black powder to modern, <coughs> I need something to cover my black powder as well as my modern. Towards High Point Production, I choose, therefore I am responsible. <laughs>